hello. Uh, big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence, all very interesting topics I'm not going to talk about. What I'm going to talk about is the home economics of data science, um, getting rid of repetitive tasks so that you have more time uh, to actually uh, move forward. So you're not going to hear about bleeding-edge technologies, and my only hope is to inspire you to take a fresh look at uh, what you're spending your resources on and to see if you could benefit from automating some of it um, away. I recently joined Cambi, but most of my experience as a data scientist um, comes from King, where I spent uh, four years taking care of Candy Crush games. Who here has played Candy Crush? Thank you, it's always nice to meet your data. So this presentation is primarily based on my experience with King. So King is probably one of the more data-driven companies out there, and millions and millions of players are generating lots and lots of data every day. But being data-driven and having lots of data doesn't necessarily mean that you're only doing groundbreaking research, only using the shiny stack. And actually, in my four years with King, I've done very little what the word science should be applied to. Most of my work would be honest, down-to-earth, data extraction, cleanup, manipulation, visualization, and interpretation of what I pretty much see with the naked eye. And quite often, I would have to do something uh, more than once. Uh, I run a database query just for a different time period, update a plot with the most recent data, copy from here, paste it over there, and so on. And I hate repetitive tasks, which is uh, quite often what uh, a data scientist ends up doing. I hate them, but I don't really mind them as long as I've got the tools with which I can automate those repetitive tasks away. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I probably have got quite a few stories of how we managed to automate stuff and, um, and so on, but uh, today I'll just uh, talk about a small example of uh, an example of a small victory. So an external provider would send us relatively small data sets, which we could later use to improve play experience in, in, in Candy Crush games. And the data would come in in uh, pretty ugly spreadsheets. They would even contain pie charts like this. And uh, sometimes they would also contain errors and inconsistencies, and they would be a pain uh, should we want to use them in further analysis. We wanted to be able to integrate these external data uh, in our own data warehouse so that we could do analysis and build data models on the entirety of the historical data and uh, use them in our existing and hypothetical data visualization and tools. So at first, uh, we just asked uh, to be sent raw data as CSV files. <laughs> so that we could uh, load the data into our XSL database. And this solved the original problem, but it created a new one, manual labor. And not only was it a waste of time, um, it also meant a delay in the chain. A new batch could arrive in the evening and then wait until late morning next day for a data scientist to take care of it. And that just wasn't good enough. We wanted to take the data scientist out of the picture so that everything would happen automatically, maybe with less smoke. <laughs> Since we couldn't give external people access to our database, we had to go around solving this problem in a funny way. <laughs> so we had uh, uh, those emails with data attached sent to a mailbox, and uh, we would have a Python script that would scan this mailbox every few minutes uh, looking for emails from a specific sender with CSV attachments. And should there be a CSV attachment, uh, it would save it to a special folder and uh, pass the file name uh, to an R script. And that R script would actually process the data. It, it would 
save it to XSOL, edit historical data from the XSOL, uh, do the analysis, make nice visualizations, and update an internet web page, and it would send out emails to different people. It was a very nice script, and uh, I really miss it. <laughs> Naturally, one could ask, why did you use two scripts? So it, it was just something we, we, we did. We didn't have any planning, brainstorming sessions, or management buy-in. It just, uh, I did um, the data processing and visualization part, and another data scientist jumped in uh, to help with the mailbox scanning part. And, um, and it's very good when people can be flexible and they can just run with an idea. It fosters kind of attitude. And why did we write those scripts in different languages? Again, I started doing my part in R because that's my language of choice and the other data scientist was more comfortable with Python. And even though we could understand each other's code, we didn't really have to because one script will just uh, pipe its output into the other. And it's good when people can choose their tools. It fosters curiosity and the desire to learn new things. And a few words of warning. You probably don't want your data scientists to be data monkeys. It's never a good sign if someone is content going through the same routine again and again. And I remember one suggestion uh, from one of my more experienced colleagues, uh, which was only partly a joke to find a new data scientist who's done the same thing more than twice. But you probably don't want your data scientists to spend all their time on developing and maintaining a complex ecosystem of automations. There is nothing intrinsically wrong with that, it's just that it's a different job description and a different skill set. And if you let your data scientists do too much tool building, you can find yourself in a situation like this, when you don't really have time for the original task anymore. You probably want most of your data scientists spending most of their time on descriptive and exploratory analysis coming up with hypotheses and testing them, asking and answering questions relevant to the business. So in my experience, the sweet spot is when any data scientist in your team uh, can, um, can tackle a repetitive task by quickly cobbling together an automation, and should it grow into a more serious project, then there is someone else, a data engineer, a software developer, who can take this project further. So if we imagine the spectrum between a data monkey and someone who is only doing automation and doesn't really have time for data sciences, science per se, you can find uh, sort of that sweet spot where you have a happy, healthy, and productive data scientist. Thank you.